my name is Rob, and I will be talking to you today about the most important issue in Canada right now. It's chicken. I did grow up around chickens, but to be honest, I was never good friends with any of these guys. Uh, in fact, I've been out to catch them. But I did form a very different kind of relationship with chicken growing up, though, as I used to be an aspiring fighter, something that I did care about was protein. And pretty quickly I found chicken to be the cheapest and leanest meat out there, so it became my go-to meat. And the same is true for many other people today. So with a show of hands, who here loves to eat chicken? Right, it's quite a few people. Well, the increase in popularity for chicken seems to be due to four reasons, which are first, health. Uh, we know that red and processed meats are linked to cancer and numerous other diseases, while white meat is seen as a lean protein, which makes it a go-to food for a healthy lifestyle. Second is the environment. Livestock is terrible for the environment. In fact, it emits more greenhouse gases than all transport in the world combined. That includes planes and cars and boats and buses, but it's mostly due to cattle. Chicken isn't really that bad. Then third, and perhaps most importantly, is convenience. Chicken happens to be a very cheap meat and is also very easy to cook with. And then last, and to me most interestingly, is empathy. Chickens are very difficult for people to empathize with. And this is both, as this meme shows, because of how we perceive their intelligence, but it's also because of the way they look. And studies show that emotional appeals are more persuasive than logical ones to change people's behavior. So we can see this, for example, in the attempts by conservation organizations who try to save endangered animals. Because what you will see each and every time is that people only donate money when the animals used in ads are either beautiful, like a Bengal tiger, or cute, like a panda. But this guy, <laughs> no one cares about saving the blobfish. I mean, just look at him, right? We can apply this to our food choices too. Cows and pigs are sort of relatable, right? They look a little bit like our pets, but this guy, <laughs> it is very hard for people to empathize with this creature. So no one thinks twice about eating them. In fact, when we Google the word chicken, all that we see is literally a piece of meat. So that is why chicken is extremely popular today. And we can find it in anything from health foods like salads to snack foods like chicken wings. And this is reflected in numbers too. So what we see here in Canada is that where beef and pork consumption have been decreasing for decades, chicken has kept rising steadily. But chickens also happen to be very small animals. So we're gonna do some math here, and I've tried my best to visualize this to make it as accessible as possible. So when we compare milk and eggs, a cow produces around 7,400 liters of milk in a year, which converted to calories is about 4.4 million calories, that's enough to feed about 2,000 people for a day. Chickens lay around 300 eggs, which is enough to feed only about 10. So in other words, one cow is the equivalent of about 200 chickens. Now for meat, a cow holds around 500 pounds of usable meat, a pig around 160 pounds, but a chicken holds a mere four pounds. So when we take into account a caloric difference, this means that one pig is the equivalent of about 40 chickens, and one cow is the equivalent of about 150 of them. What this has resulted in is that in a year like 2017, Canadians have slaughtered around the same number of cows and pigs as they did back in the 80s, which is about 21 million pigs, is about three million cows. But if we look at chickens, we have slaughtered a staggering 711 million chickens. Now, it's very hard to conceive of what such a number even means or looks like. You can think of it as 600 times the entire population of Calgary, or 90 chickens for every breath that you take in a given year, or about 20 chickens for every Canadian in the country, which includes each and every one of you in this room. While we're consuming less meat, we're killing more animals than ever before. And these numbers have turned small farms like the one that I grew up on into enormous factories. You may think, well, why does any of this matter? I mean, they're just chickens, right? But there are a lot of questions of ethics, but there's a few principles that seemingly anyone can agree on. Now, one such principle is that causing unnecessary suffering is bad. Because whenever someone goes out to harm or kill someone merely for their own pleasure, it's bad since no one wants to suffer. So when we think of the amount of evil in the universe, we can think of it in terms of all the suffering being imposed and experienced. So we can think of small things like headaches or stubbing your toes, 
but also much more serious long-lasting suffering from things like mental health issues and disease. Now, a very interesting question posed by Peter Singer, who is often touted to be the most influential moral philosopher alive, is why would there be a difference between the suffering of a human and that of an animal, since we're wired in the same way to feel the same thing, such as pain and fear and boredom and frustration, and we care about the interests of dogs and cats and maybe horses. Admittedly, they do seem cuter and more intelligent than chickens, though chickens can be kind of cute too. This is me with Stan, who was rescued by a local sanctuary. And studies do increasingly show that the intelligence of chickens is close to that of many mammals. But I'm not here to argue that chickens are somehow brilliant animals, because it really shouldn't matter. If intelligence is what decides moral status, given that pigs are more intelligent than dogs, doesn't that imply that you should be eating dogs instead of pigs? It's probably not, right? Well, why shouldn't we? Because both can suffer and have an interest to live. It is not a being's intelligence, but their capacity for happiness and suffering, and their desire to live that makes their lives valuable. So for example, if an orphan would be extremely mentally impaired, we wouldn't say, oh, well, you don't come morally because you're not intelligent. No, anyone who can suffer and wants to live should count. And we know that chickens have a desire to live and the capacity to suffer tremendously. We have to remember that the industry for chickens is divided up into two parts. There's broilers and laying hens. So one is for meat and the other is for eggs. I expect that most of you will have seen videos of cruelty on farms before, but that's not what I want to show. I want to show the average living conditions, not abuse. For meat, in Canada, the average chicken grower produces around 250,000 chickens a year. That is the entire population of Saskatoon being raised on a single farm. The daily growth rates for meat chickens have increased by over 300% in the past six years, which often results in poor bone health and lag disorders. But despite the fact that chickens are now about three times as big as they were 60 years ago, the industry guideline stipulates a stocking density of 31 kilograms, or about 14 chickens per square meter, which as modern farms look like this. And by 40 days of age, more than a quarter of these birds will barely be able to walk because of their exploding weight. Now when they reach slaughter age at 39 days, which is less than 2% of their natural age year lifespan, chickens are transported to the slaughterhouse and killed at a line speed of 200 birds per minute. That is more than three per second. Now on to eggs. For eggs, 90% in Canada come from caged chickens who are held in battery cages that are 50 centimeters deep and 60 centimeters wide. This is too little space to either lie down or stretch their wings. It's about the size of a letter-sized piece of paper. The average Canadian egg farm holds around 22,000 of these hens. And since chickens, male chickens, sorry, don't lay eggs, they're often disposed of through maceration with grinding blades, which the Canadian National Farm Animal Care Council, who look after the well-being of farm animals in the country, recognizes as euthanasia. So in short, the living, feeling birds that I grew up around have been turned into milk products. You may think that cage-free or free-range resolves these issues, but cage-free or free-run only implies that birds are loose in an open barn, but they're not actually allowed outside. There's also free-range, which means that there is an outside area attached to the building, but it doesn't specify how large the area has to be or how much time hens uh, get to spend outside. And they also cause a lot more problems. For example, 12% of cage-free hens die prematurely as opposed to only 6% of cage ones, which is mostly because the birds peck each other. So therefore, many of these farms have beak trimming practices in place, in which part of the beak is trimmed off to prevent them from pecking each other. When we consider all of these things, one of the strangest things about chicken in Canada is that they are excluded from federal welfare legislation in the criminal code, and they are not legally required to be rendered unconscious during slaughter, while cows and pigs are. And this is especially strange, because chickens make up over 95% of the land animals that we kill. Nature is cruel, but wild animals do live freely and they get to make their own decisions to pursue their own desires. But this is not the case for chickens. We create them and bring them to life, so we are responsible for what happens to them. They have no choice in this. Now, a final important point to make here is that I'm not going to condone what goes on in the cattle and particularly the pig industry, but on a personal level, for each egg that we consume, we need one of these animals to sit in a cage for a total of 30 hours. And while the average Canadian eats one cow every 13 years, they eat almost 260 chickens, which comes down to one kill 
every two and a half weeks. I think that if we truly want to reduce the evil of unnecessary suffering, we should all start by cutting down our chicken and egg consumption first. Thank you. Thank you.